all right good morning once again everyone so today we're going to be continuing spreadsheet once again we uh, would have already started um, chapter 7.2 so we're going to do a basic review of what we would have covered so far let's see if you guys were following along if you remember what we would have covered so far so anyone that knows the answer, you could go ahead. Um, our first question. To know if a cell is active, how would you know that? Um, um sorry, sorry. Right, very good. So it has a darker border. Very good. Um, you guys remember what are some of the options to complete a cell? Why am I typing for? Enter. Good. Enter. Tab. 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 Good. somewhere shift tab and so on arrow key good third question what is cell reference um the combination of column letters and rows very good not rows row so combination of the column letter and the row number to give you one name that is a cell reference so column a and row number one that gives you the cell reference of a one and when we say cell reference are we referencing the name of the cell or are we referencing what is inside of the cell Destiny, I saw you on mute, but we didn't hear anything. So what's inside of the cell? Inside the cell, very good. So we reference what is inside of the cell. Good. Um, we have two types of data in spreadsheets that we focus on the most. What are the two types? So labels and values. Very good. Labels and values. Now, by default, labels are what aligned? So left aligned. Labels are left aligned. And uh, values are what aligned? Right. Right aligned. Right aligned. Correct. So labels are left aligned and values are right aligned. Just give me one second and check something. So labels are left aligned, values are right aligned. Um, what are some values that we do not treat as values? Values that we do not treat as values. Sir, do you hear Sir, an address? Part of me is that year, um, address, so that could be lot number age sir an id number id number good very good date date good very good so in some rare cases you might do some calculations on the year the age the date and so on 
but it's not a common calculation it's not very common so we don't want to accidentally do any calculations with it and so um, that there uh, we treat it as labels and uh, let's see do, 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 do. then we looked at formatting margin center all right so when it comes to margin center um when you margin center a lot of cells together what name does it get or what becomes the name Each cell has to have a name. So when you merge in center, you are merging or grouping cells together. So what name does it get? How do we know what name does it get? Or what becomes this new name? Remember when we highlight a bunch of cells, we get that one white cell. Why do we get that one white cell? Sir, because that's the first box. Yes, that's the first box. Good. And uh, this first box here, this first cell, the top left cell, which is the first cell, basically takes dominance. It takes um, dominance over the other cells, and this becomes the name of the uh, group of cells that you're going to merge, or we can say the range of cells. So no matter where you highlight those group of cells, you're always going to notice the top left cell is going to remain white. And that cell is actually going to be the name of the range. So if you notice, even though I highlighted so many, G2 is in the name box. And that's the very first one. If I highlight from the very corner here, A1, B1, and so on. So the top left cell, that is the name of a range or a merge and center. All right, great. So I'm going to pull this over here. Put this inside here. Great, so we're finished with our review and uh, you guys did relatively well. Other than I was only hearing from a few persons. So I'm hoping, assuming, that the persons that weren't asked answering that they were at least thinking of the correct answer. One could only hope. So please remember once again, as we continue, make your notes. If you missed anything, the recordings will be in your classroom. If you still don't understand at that point, you can message me for clarifications. So we're going to continue from where we left off. We stopped at cut, copy, and paste. So we shall continue from there. Um, let's see. I think we have to start somewhere around. Darren? Could you start a reading for us? Cut, copy, and paste. The cut, copy, and paste commands operate consistently in all Microsoft applications. The cut command removes the selected information and places that information on the clipboard. The clipboard is a storage space that temporarily holds information. This information may then be moved, pasted to another location. 
Note that Excel copies the entire cell including formulae and the resulting values, comments, and cell formats. Good. So, you guys should be familiar with cut, copy, and paste. You have an assignment, you go on Google, you search for the answer to the assignment, you copy it, you paste it in Microsoft Word, assignment finish. So, when it comes to spreadsheet now, what is the difference, what are the key aspects you should remember for cut, copy, and paste? Well, as mentioned, the function is the same it copies or it moves information from one location puts it inside of the clipboard puts it inside of the clipboard which is a temporary storage location and then it moves to another location so it's not only in spreadsheet it has this clipboard microsoft word also has the clipboard so how do we access the clipboard well not sure if I mentioned this already, but this entire space that you're seeing at the top here with all of these features, this is called a ribbon. So that's important for you to remember. All of these options that you're seeing here, this entire section here at the top is called the ribbon. Now the ribbon has tabs. What we call tabs are these options that you're seeing at the top here. So, if you notice, we have um, each tab has a name. So, we say the name and then the word tab after it. So, we're going to say this is the home tab, the insert tab, the draw tab, the page layout tab, formulas tab, and so on. So, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because when you have to describe how you are locating a certain option or certain feature, you have to use those descriptions, those details. You're going to say that you go to the ribbon, you go to the formulas tab, and then you will locate the name manager option. So these are the tabs at the top here. See this box here? I don't want you to be using this box. Yes, the box is useful but I don't want you to be using it because if you use it, you're gonna put yourself at a disadvantage because you need to remember what is under each tab. For example, it's important to you to know that filter is under the data tab because if you go in the exam and they ask you where is filter located or how do you use filter, you have to be able to describe that. You go to the ribbon, you click on the data tab, and uh, maybe you can mention in the sort and filter section you will find filter option so it's not necessary for you to remember each section you notice there's a line between some of them and they have a name at the bottom that's the name of that section get and transform data queries and connections it's not that important for you to remember the um, name of the section but over time um, the common ones like font, alignment, number, you'll get used to them and you'll remember them. But the most important part to remember is the tabs. You have to remember each tab and what is under the tabs so that you can make use of those options. So under the home tab, you're going to find a clipboard section. And uh, right next to clipboard, you're going to see a little arrow. When you click on that, it's going to open the clipboard. Now, so if you type something and you copy that information, notice it's going to appear inside of the clipboard. So you guys can try this on your computer. One thing you're not going to see is that it's showing me actually how many entries I can make into this clipboard. You're not going to see it because it's appearing on my other screen. But every time I copy something, currently it's showing me 2 of 24. So only 24 items can be stored in this clipboard at any one time. 
only 24 items. So it doesn't matter if you cut something. Cut. Notice it appeared inside of the clipboard. And this is actually a, a neat trick because sometimes we accidentally cut something and we know when we cut something and we paste, then it's moved. But sometimes we actually, when we cut, um, the item is actually removed and we actually don't get to paste the item or whatever we would have cut. So if that ever happened to you, then you can still go to the clipboard and be able to find what you would have cut. Because these items here that you're seeing in the clipboard, you could actually go click on a cell and then click on the item there and notice it's going to paste what is inside of the clipboard. So even though I cut the word cut, I can still paste it multiple times because it's inside of that clipboard here. So that's a useful tool. Um, if you're copying a lot of things or even if you're cutting a lot of things also. So as mentioned already, it only can hold 24 items. So in that sense, it is a temporary storage. It can only hold so much and it can only keep the information for so long. It's not a permanent storage where you can always go back to the future, um, go sometime in the future, you're going to find all of these information. No. It's only going to be stored for a certain amount of time. If you continue to copy, it's going to continue to push down what was the last piece of information. And when it reaches that 24 mark, the older information is going to disappear. Now, when you're copying something in Excel, it copies everything that is inside of a cell. That's important for you to remember. Whatever is inside of a cell, and you copy a cell, if you right click and you copy, it copies everything that is inside of that cell. So for example, I'm going to add a lot of formatting to this cell. I'm going to add bold. I'm going to add italic. I'm going to underline. I'm going to turn the background yellow, the text red. I'm even going to add a comment. Notice this red arrow here that's indicating this is a comment. Uh, what else can I do? I'm going to center it. Um, all the sign won't work. Well, unless we turn it into a number. We got 5400%. So, and let me see if we try some borders. Well, there's a slight border there. Outside border. Okay, so we added quite a few formatting. Let me change the font also. Change the font. Change the size. Good. So, even though I did all of that to this cell here, if I right click on it and I copy it and I go to another location and I paste, it pastes everything that I would have copied. Anybody remembers why hashtag is showing up? Sir, because the cell is too small to hold the data. Very good. The cell is too small to hold the data. So we either drag this out so that we can resize the cell to fit our information. We're actually going to look at that um, in a few minutes. Um, yes, but notice everything that was inside of this cell at the top here was copied to this cell at the bottom here. Even the border. Notice the take outside border. It is also there. So that's important to remember. When you copy a cell, whatever is inside of that cell gets copied also. Now, if you went into the cell and you copied 
a part of the text inside of the cell and you paste it somewhere, notice you don't get formatting. You don't get anything that was inside of that cell, only the characters that you would have copied. It's only by copying the cell entirely does it paste everything that is inside of the cell. Now, what I want us to also take note of is a few shortcut keys that you guys should be um, making use of when you continue to use the software. So does anybody know what is the shortcut key for copying? It starts with CTRL, CTRL and ones. There are control C. Very good. So control and C. So this uh, shortcut for copy is control and C. What is the shortcut for cut? Control V. Oh, sorry, sir. Control X. Good. Control and X. Is. That's not sir. Control V. What did you say, Josh? Um, Josh. Okay, he left. This is Control and V. Um, what is undo? Sir, Control Z. C and redo. Control Y. Very good. So these shortcuts here, these are the shortcuts we're going to start off with. There's many more shortcuts that you need to memorize, that you should memorize as we continue to use um, spreadsheets, as we continue to use any software. Uh, most softwares make use of these very same commands here, these very same shortcuts. And uh, as you continue to build your skills and become professional users of these software, it's much easier to use the shortcuts than to constantly be on your mouse right clicking and to use the options in the menu. Basically what happens is that when you are using the software, you try to keep your hand on the keyboard all the time. So as you're typing, and especially in spreadsheets, because you have the arrow keys that can move you around, you don't necessarily need to go back to that mouse. So once you can master what are some of the um, shortcut keys, then you can be able to navigate easier while still remaining on the keyboard. So these are the common shortcut keys that we'll look at for now. Cut, copy, paste, undo, and redo. Now if at any point you're in spreadsheets and you don't remember the shortcut, if you hover your cursor over the options, you're going to notice the shortcut. So my cursor is over copy. That is control and C. Um, cut, control and X. Paste is control and V. Undo is at the top here. Control and Z. And uh, redo is control and Y. Oh, another popular one. Save. What is save? That is control and S. So control and S gives you allows you to save your documents. So instead of say this file was already saved. Instead of you constantly going to the top here and clicking save, notice the shortcut is there also. Instead of doing that, you can use the shortcut keys quickly to save your document. So you don't have to do that all the time. Navigate to the mouse, then move it and click that. That's going to take up more time. So those are the common shortcut keys that you should memorize now. But, so we're finished with cut, copy, and paste, how that functions. Next, we're going to look at column widths and row heights. Um, let's see. Destiny, can you read for us? 
Column width and row height. By default, all columns in Excel are 8.43 spaces wide, but, but can contain a width of up to 255 characters. If a column has a width of zero, then the column is hidden. Rows are typically 12.75 points high, approximately one six inch or 0.4 cm, which is just the right, which is just the right size to fit the default font. A row can be as high as 409 points, almost six inches, but a height of zero will hide the row. You will often need to change column widths and row heights. If a value is too big for a slot, your data will be displayed as that sign. If your text is too long and the next cell also contains data, then only the first few letters of your text will be visible. There are several ways of changing the size of cells in Excel. Good. Emmanuel Leach, can you continue the reading on this side here for us? Drag a column over a border to a different size. Double click a column so it border to auto fit the column. Auto fit means the column is going to fit the largest cell entry. Double click a words bottom border to adjust the wall height. The row is adjusted to the largest font size. From the format menu, choose row, height, or column width. If the mouse is here to change the color width or row height, a screen tip appears that displays the color size. Very good. So, column width and row height. So, as you guys should have noticed that whenever you open a new sheet it basically opens to a standard size like how in this case here um, this case where we can resize the column the width um, the row and so on so but when we open a brand new sheet it opens to a standard size that standard size for columns is going to be 8.43 spaces wide as a default there so if you put your cursor if you put your cursor on the line between the two columns you're going to see a line you put your cursor there notice the change it went from an arrow pointing down to basically um, almost across with two arrows pointing left and right so if you click on that now notice some text came up there it says width 8.43 and then in bracket 6 to 4 pixels so if you notice that is the same default that you are seeing here 8.43 spaces wide so once again you click that you see the same default measurement there now the width can contain up to 255 characters now if you have a width of zero so we go from the default of eight to zero then that column is going to be hidden so how do we make it zero well we basically drag it in so notice the number is reducing we're at seven six five four three two one and we're at zero now so at zero here that b column is now hidden we can no longer put information inside of it because there's no way to click in between here to get that b column so it's now hidden for us to get it back you need to drag it back out so that we can get that um, um column back on the screen and then if you can remember the default width 8.43 you can put it at that also now rows they have a height of 12.75 so if you go between the numbers now notice the same car so appeared the same icon the double arrow on this one this time it's pointing up and down because that is the direction you are going in so if you click on it this one is at 15 
um, it's 12.75 so I guess mine is defaulting to 12.75 um, 15 are typically 12.75 so it seems as though the default change. Let me open another sheet and check it out. Yeah, it seems as though the default change to 50. Now, it's not that important for you to remember these default values because um, I'm yet to see an exam question based on them. But it's good to know how you can resize the cells. What is the default? What, you, uh, what is the standard size? so that you can have information inside of the cell. It's basically a practical knowledge for you. So that when you're using the, uh, um, when you're using the application, you are effective when you are using it. So it's the same for the height, for the um, columns, you just click on it and you simply drag in order to resize the height of the row. So, Similar to the column, if you make it a size of zero, that row is also going to be hidden. There's no way you can go between here. Even if you press the arrow keys, you won't go to that row two. It's now hidden. So you have to drag it out now in order to see it once again. So, this was the question I was asking earlier. What does hashtags mean? Um, I didn't realize we didn't cover it as yet. So when you see those hashtags, it basically means that the information cannot fit inside of the cell. It's actually mostly for numbers. It's mostly for numbers. If you look at the top here in the formula bar, you're going to notice all the numbers are still at the top here but it's not showing up inside of the cell because it's, it doesn't fit inside of the cell so you just simply have to resize it until you can see all of the information now unlike numbers which basically curl up inside the cell you can see they curl up and you can't really tell what they are um, letters actually do not curl up they basically only show you what up to what point they have data in the cell so notice I typed a bunch of characters as well and it went way beyond the cell it basically overlapped the other cell but notice because I have information over here it's going to cut off at this point here now notice when I remove this information, notice the characters now extend over to the other cell. If I was to continue typing, it's going to continue extending over to the other cell. So that is the difference of how labels and values were, um, operate when they are too large for a cell. Labels, they extend outside of the cell. They're not inside of the other cells. Please remember that. They're not inside of the other cells. They're just extending out of that cell. So if you were to type something here, it's going to cut it off. It only shows what is up to that cell ending. Whereas a value is going to stay inside of that cell. It's not going to come out. And it's basically going to curl up and you cannot see it unless you make the cell large enough for you to see the value. So how do we resize our columns? How do we resize our rows? Well, basically, as I already showed you, the first method is click and drag. So you put your cursor between the two um, column names on the very line, the cursor is going to change and you click and you drag. Same for the rows also. You put your cursor on the line and you click and you 
drop in order to resize. Now, the second method is a very important method for you to remember, auto fit. This is actually the one of the more useful ways of resizing your columns on your rows. Because if you notice, if you were to click and drag this in, you have to keep estimating what is the perfect size to have the data inside of it. Because if you go too close, then that's gonna happen. So you have to keep estimating that this looks like a good size, I can keep it there. Now, with the second method, the auto fit method, that automatically fits the cell to the right amount of size to show the data. So let me remove all of that. And I'm going to type those three numbers there. I'm going to type a few more. And notice when I double click now, so auto fit is also called double click. Because the same line that you're gonna to click to drag back and forth, you have to double click on that to do your auto fit. So if we double click on this line, notice the space was automatically reduced. I'm gonna type one at the top here, and then I'm gonna double click also here. I notice it was reduced to this small size of this one here. So auto fit, you simply double click the same line that you would have dragged and that is going to automatically fit the column width. Same for the height also. If you made this bigger and you double click on it, it's going to put it at the perfect size for you to see your information. Now, one thing to note about auto fit is that it only widens to fit the largest cell entry. Very important to remember. It widens to fit the largest cell entry. So in this column here, this column B, the largest cell entry is one. When we say large, we mean in terms of width, not in terms of how much, um, how large the value is in terms of width. So how much space is it taking up width wise? So for example, if I add in more numbers, that is going to take up more width. Now, notice when I auto fit, what is going to happen? It um, extended the border, the column, to fit this larger value here. So whenever you auto fit, it enlarges to fit the largest piece of information. If you're doing a column, it's going to enlarge to the largest width. And if you're doing um, a row, it's going to enlarge the height to fit the information. So if you turn on word wrap and we enter more information, notice if I extend it more. So notice we have some empty space here at the top. So if I double click here, Notice it automatically fit the information. There's no extra space at the top here inside of this row. Once again, drag it down. We're seeing that extra space. Double click and it automatically fit to that largest information. So if I just type one there, notice it automatically changed by itself. It automatically resize to um, that one there. Or even if you want to double click, it will go back to that size to fit that one piece of information. So what can happen to you practically is that, say for instance, you have a width around this size here, and somewhere at the bottom, you accidentally type in a bunch of characters. And you are working at the top here, you don't, you're not seeing what's at the bottom. So when you go and auto fit now, you want to bring in this one, like basically about there, so you double click to auto fit. But instead of it getting smaller, it gets larger. And that is because inside of that same column, we have information that is large, that is taking up that space. So 
but that's something to take note of if it ever happens to you in the future why that would have been the cause so by removing it now i can um resize it because there will come cases where you're going to put information below what is at the top here so you have to be careful with auto fitting and resizing and so on that it doesn't affect your data at the top or below so we have drag we have auto fit which is double click and we also have the format menu the format menu that is located on the home tab um, under the cells section we have format here and it's basically some options here so we have row height so this box is going to appear and we can type in what value we want so remember for my program the default height was 15 so if i type in say for example 70 it's going to enlarge to that size i go back to the format menu column width um i can change the width to 70 also and notice that's extended out there now notice we also have the option to auto fit so if i auto fit row height notice it reduced it here and if i auto fit the column it automatically went back to the perfect size to fit that information so if it's hard for you to double click here if you can if it's if double clicking in itself is hard for you you have the option at the top here to auto fit or change column width and so on you also even have the options here to hide and unhide any cells or rows or columns or so on all right are you guys following so far Yes sir. Yes, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyone with any questions? Anything that we need to go over? Anything that we went too fast with that you didn't follow? Nothing for me, sir. All right. Sir, sir, are there any shortcut commands you can use to like um to format the cell and those things? <laughs> Yes, they are. Very good question. So, um, in terms of um, moving the border, I'm not sure if they are um, to extend. I'm not sure if there's shortcuts for that. I don't know whether there's shortcuts for that. Because if you would have, um, if there were, you would have seen the options around here. If you would have hovered over it. But um, for other formatting, like for example, if you want to bold something, Control and B. Um, italic, control and I, underline, control and U, and so on. So it's just hovering your cursor over them. But remember the keyboard basically has a limited amount of keys on it. So they can't really map everything to a um, key. Um, I think making font larger is control, shift, and something. Control and something. I can't remember exactly what it was. Control. As time goes on, we're gonna look for those um, shortcut keys if we get them. Excel shortcut keys for. Okay, so it's saying um, H for row height and for width W. Now, the width I just get height of an entire row next to us is shift space bar. So shift space bar, no, that's highlighting the entire row. And press shift F10, which is really Control 
control shift no space h no Currently, the only shortcut is going to bring up a menu. It's not like how um how we are going to press Control and B to make that bolder because it's not something that is that simple. They are shortcuts. Um, it's just doing a little research, and you can find shortcuts to it. Um. 956 I don't really want to touch um, formulas and functions because that one is going to take a bit of time and we're almost out of time all right so if anybody has any additional questions guys we're gonna stop here for today we're almost out of time here so what we looked at today in review um, cut copy and paste they work the same way among most programs when you cut the copy and you paste. your piece. The clipboard, remember it's a temporary storage that is used to store what you would have cut, what you would have copied. In Microsoft, you have a limit of 24 items that you can cut or copy. Um, and remember in spreadsheet, when you are copying a cell, it copies everything inside of that cell. If there's a formula inside of the cell, if there's any results, any comments, any formats, everything gets copied. Um, the default space for a column is 8.43. Default for a row is 12.75. Um, if any one of them is zero, the row or the column, the width or the height, it is basically going to be hidden. Um, if you ever see this hashtag, it basically refers to numbers, to values. Only values appear as hashtags. And it basically means it's too big for the cell. Text on the other hand, if it's too long, it's actually going to extend over into the other cell. Is going to overlap into the other cell, but that doesn't mean it's inside of the other cell. If we enter um, information in the other cell, then only the first few letters will appear in that cell unless, until you would have extend that cell once again. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Excuse me. So um, I, I was meant to ask you, uh, what's Excel like measurement, default measurement? Is it point cm or inches? It seems as though it is points in terms of measuring. 15 points, 18 points. It looks like it's using points to measure the, um, the width and the height. Okay, sir. But the reason why they're mentioning um, inches and cm here is because that's what we use realistically so like if you have to go and print the document now you can do a simple conversion that 406 points basically means six inches so that you know now if you got to print this section it's going to take up so much um, space on a page but actually you don't have to do that conversion because um later on we're going to look at there's an entire chapter about printing your spreadsheet and uh, how we go about printing because if you notice it's a very large page you can see so when we go and print how can we print exactly what we want and how can we modify how it shows up in the printing there's an entire chapter on that so you don't have to do any conversion or worry so much about these here um these values it's mostly for um when you're entering the data and to have it to the right size to see the data inside of it. Um, and then we ended off with how do we resize? We have basically three options. 
you either drag the border you double click which gives you the uh, feature of auto fit remember that extends to the largest cell and then lastly we have the format menu either one you can use basically in Excel there is quite a few ways of doing one task and it's just finding a way that is um, simple to you that is easy to you to use so so if you guys don't have any questions anything that you want to add any concerns and so on that is going to be the end of today's class